Hey folks and welcome to Traveler Tuesday. I am Ardwolf and today we are going to be having a look at a relatively new product from Mongoose Publishing for Traveler uh, Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. This is the 3rd Imperium. This is the first in a planned line of setting books um, that will cover all of the major empires of the official Traveler universe. And this, of course, is part of this. The, this one covers the center of that, the 3rd Imperium. Um, so we're going to have a look at this. Now, I actually haven't looked through this at all yet. I've got the physical copy on the way, but when you order the physical copy from Mongoose directly, um, you get the PDF as well. Well, so now we're having a look at the PDF uh, as we aim to continue our Traveler Tuesday coverage. So I've got a, a bunch of these uh, queued up. So we'll see. Um, we've got some adventure type stuff material to, to cover as well, which I don't want to do flip throughs of. So what I might do is more of an overview type of video of that. If you have a particular thing you would like to see, I know that Pirates of Drenax has been mentioned in previous comments. Please do mention it in the comments below. Please do... Um, support the channel by subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up if you find these videos useful and of course if you'd like to see more traveler content let me know in the comments so let's get started here so we have the cover this is a 242 page pdf um, and as usual for these things we'll note that it is bookmarked uh, the bookmark structure is not incredibly dense here one of the things that we have however is a full treatment of the core sector which is something uh, this will treat the core sector in more detail than we have ever seen it before, assuming it matches the format for previous sector books from Mongoose for Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition, and actually Mongoose Traveler 1st Edition as well. So for those who don't know, um, one of the current versions of Traveler that's around right now, if you need an introduction to Traveler, I have a video on that. I'll try to remember to put a card in the corner to, uh, to direct you to that video. Um, that will tell you a lot about the various different editions of Traveler. One of the current editions of Traveler that is available right now is the Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. Um, compatibility with many prior versions of Traveler is very high in Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. So let's uh, let's start taking a look at the book here. And we got the table of contents. Um, author Christopher Griffin on this particular book. Editor Matthew Sprange. Sprange? Sprange? I'm not sure. Um, cover artist Nikita Ves Veselchuk. Um, and proofing by Charlotte Law. So um, this table of contents, I, I think we have the core sector here and then we have the various subsectors. You could ask for a better table of contents, I think, <laughs> frankly. Um, this just gives you the chapters, um, which I think is not terribly useful. We'll see if there's an index. I'm not sure. Um, all right, so we have an introduction. Um, who should read this book, which is written with the uh, referee in mind. That's the traditional traveler name for Game Master. Um, conventions, Third Imperium. This is going to talk about dates and humanity and all that kind of stuff. The, one of the basic uh, sort of fundaments of the Traveler universe is that um, here on Earth, we, uh, we develop technology, we eventually develop Jump Drive and start reaching out into the galaxy, and we find alien races who shockingly are also human, uh, some of whom at least are also human. Uh, and the, the game Imperium, the old game, which I'd really like to see somebody bring back, to be honest, uh, is, a, is a retelling of that struggle in war game format between the, the fresh-faced um, Terrans and the entrenched Villani. So, uh, this talks about major races, galactic directions, imperial society and culture, talks about trade, which is a big thing for the Imperium, obviously. Imperium is, the third Imperium is very big. Solomani and Villani. Now, the Villani have been uh, kind of given short shrift as far as, like, the traveler alien species go. Um, I think primarily for licensing reasons, because the only book on the Villani that ever came out was from Digest Group, and then some clown bought up the rights to all the Digest Group stuff and won't allow it to be used in the official Traveler universe anymore. I believe that is still a point of tension with that. It was an excellent book. Digest Group did a lot of good stuff, but maybe as a result, this is a theory anyway, um, we have not been able to have a book on the Villani since then, which is damned unfortunate because they're super important to the Third Imperium. Remember that the Third Imperium is sort of based on the foundation of the Second, which was based on the foundation of the First Villani Imperium. So this is an issue. Um, cultural zones, the, the vegan, I believe vegan to be the, the proper pronunciation for this and not vegan, since they're not 
I don't know if they're vegans, actually. But the vegans, are the vegans vegan? That's a great question. If you know, please answer in the comments. Um, they're based uh, around the star Vega, rather than there being a star named Vega. So we also have these so these other uh, cultural districts, the League of Antares, the Luriani, they're a minor human race. Uh, so the Silians, they're a minor human race. And the Silian Federation is the state from which the uh, Third Imperium originally emerged something like 1,000 or 1,100 years ago. Uh, the Lancian Cultural Region and Amec Protectorate, I'm not really sure about those. Additional cultural regions have been proposed for the Gianni, Surat, Darmine, and Chanistin. Um... I know who the Gianni and Surat are. They are also minor human races. The Darmine and Chinestin, I'm not sure who they are. I'm not the world's greatest authority on um, Traveler canon, after all. And there's honestly a lot here. So, uh, But here we have the big scale map of, of the Third Imperium and the surrounding states. Uh, surrounding states include, interestingly, they appear to have left off the little dangly bit of the Jordani Consulate that's up here in the Spinward Marches. Uh, which is interesting because that's a traditional place in which traveler campaigns happen, and um, there have been five wars fought with the Jordani up there, so it's interesting that they left that out. Uh, interstellar relations, that's interesting. I believe the Julian Protectorate is this state up here, without checking the map. I think that's correct. Uh, internal relations... Now, I think this is is uh, aimed at the what what is now called the Classic Era or Golden Age, which is before um, the rebellion that is depicted in Mega Traveler. And of course, you know you're free to ignore the rebellion and subsequent collapse and new era if you like. Um, I would be personally inclined to do that were I running in the class in the official Traveler universe, um, just because I would want to give the players agency to affect those things at least in. At least on paper, I would. Um, and I would like to give myself the agency as a game master to riff off what the players are doing and the kind of campaign that the players are playing in rather than necessarily go, going according to the script that was laid down in the, in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, Imperial military forces, squadron and fleet organizations. Here's different squadron types. This has all been covered before in various products, some of which date back to the early 80s. Navy bases and depots. One of the things, the depot placement is one of those things that I think, and we'll end up talking about this later, not in this episode necessarily, but... Uh, I think we'll end up talking at some point about why the Traveler system generation method needs a bit of an overhaul, um, but we'll cover that elsewhere. I'd like to do a video on that, to be honest. Silean class battleship looks huge. Looks a lot like a rifle, actually, which is, you know, probably by design because it probably has a giant, yep, it, indeed it has a big uh, spinal mount Mason gun, or Mison gun. Uh, very vague deck plans here. Uh, I point out that they are 2D deck plans uh, in keeping with more recent products from uh, the Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition line. Uh, the early products, in, and by early products I mean almost everything except the last half dozen things, had these sort of 3D deck plans which looked nice but weren't super usable. <laughs> so these are a lot easier to deal with, I, I, in my opinion. They're more useful in an actual game. Uh, here's the Imperial Marines. Now, of course, the Traveler Core rulebook, which is mentioned here, has recently gotten a facelift. Um, so check out the video on the 2022 updated Core rules if you like. Um, I will say that, and I, I said this in the video as well, if you have the old older Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition Core book and you have High Guard in the Vehicle Handbook, there's no real reason to buy the updated rulebook. Um, I think it was just time to do a new printing, and they decided they were going to do a facelift. Uh, it is somewhat improved in layout, but the only real additions are material from either High Guard or the Vehicle Book or both. So you don't really need it if you have those books. I, of course, bought it anyway because I'm a sucker. So uh, Here is a Adventure Seed, actually, which is pretty cool that those are in there. Here's uh, Imperial Marine Assault Battle Dress, traditionally uh, associated with the Imperial Marines here. Uh, here's a disposable re-entry kit, which is they literally strap you to a pallet and throw you out into space to plummet to the planetary surface. That's 
So never never question the bravery of the Imperial Marines right there. That reminds me of the so early Soviet paratroopers who traveled to the drop zone on the outside of the plane. Um, Imperial Army, branches of the army, Mizan Rebellion. Uh, here's a, some more vehicles. Here's a grav tank. This is a TL-14 grav tank. There's another adventure seed. It's great that these are in here, explicit adventure seeds. That's traditionally been a strength of Traveler anyway. In addition to a lot of the mechanics of Traveler that sort of encourage the referee and, you know, with, with player input to kind of uh, extemporaneously generate plot ideas on their own from random roles and, and uh, pre-generated system statistics and stuff like that. Some more vehicles... Um, some more military stuff, the Imperial Guard. Uh, here is another ship. What is this? This is the Pax Imperii. Is the Imperial family's 10,000 ton yacht. Okay, so this is like, yeah, Imperium 1 here. Um, nice looking ship, 10,000 tons. <laughs> Probably got, uh, what is it, what's the... TL-15, which is which is about where Imperium Imperial technology tops out. There are a couple, like one or two systems in the Imperium that are starting to get into TL-16. And of course the Darians are nominally TL-16 as well, but that's a whole thing. We'll talk about that at some other point. Deck plans the yacht. If you end up... I mean, you could... I could see use in this, you know, uh, in, in an actual campaign if you manage to get close to the Emperor. Does it talk about the current emperor? Project Shortbow. So this was a there was a Project Longbow uh, that was I think introduced introduced along with late Mega Traveler or early New Era stuff that was like baseline observation. So it was like a uh, interstellar interferometry in, intro interferometry um, experiment, which again we'll maybe get into at some later point. Um, let's see here. Mercenary forces. Intelligence services. That's cool that we covered this. This is a thing that we, you know, had touched on in a recent uh, camp campaign that I had to drop out of, unfortunately, due to time constraints. But uh, it was intelligence services based uh, campaign. And there's really not much material on that, to be honest. Um, so it's nice that it's here. Okay, the agent... This is, looks like a patron encounter. Yep. Ah, interesting. So this brings uh, the, uh, oh, this this actually ties into the Mark Miller Traveler novel, which I mentioned in the previous video. It's called Agent of the Imperium, um, which I did pick up from Amazon, of course. Um, and it's startlingly good, actually. It's like a real legit sci-fi novel. Um, and for those looking for Easter eggs, there's plenty of those as well in that uh, in that book. Uh, so here we talk about the nobility, the moot, which is the legislative body of the Imperium, uh, orders of knighthood, political roles. This is the Imperial bureaucracy. Uh, here's the Imperial family. Okay, so here's Emperor Strephon, who is the Emperor in 1105, and who's, you know, I'm not spoiling anything here, uh, but it, the Mega Traveler setting uh, is sort of advanced the setting a couple of years, and Strephon gets assassinated and the Imperium falls apart in the Civil War. So, um, so that's not a spoiler at this point, considering that that plot device dates from 1987. Um... So here's uh, his wife and daughter, uh, Imperial Warrants, Imperial Edict 97. This also, also ties into the novel, I believe. Uh, corporations and mega corporations. How much detail did we get on this? Mega corporate courier. This is a 200 ton uh, TL 15 ship. Here's Third Imperium History. Uh, this is probably going to be fairly detailed, I would think. Uh, the Three Imperiums, okay, um, which talks, of course, about the um, the First and Second Imperium, um, or Imperia, as it as it were. Would that be correct? Imperia? Yeah, I think I think that would be the accurate Latin plural. Please, Liz Davidson, if you're watching, please correct me. Um, the Silean Federation, which of course uh, emerged into the Imperium. Here's this interstellar confederacy. 
which is a rival state, I think, to the um, the Silian Confederation. Uh, here's the Chenish Chenestin Kingdom. So these are like early states here. They're getting a lot of detail on this, a lot more than I expected. That's this is cool though. So. <clears throat> The Traveler 4th Edition, which was also called Mark Miller's Traveler, which was released by Imperium Games, which was not well run and which collapsed. Uh, but that's not Mark's fault. Mark was not running it. Mark just licensed it. But um, the default setting for that edition was what was called Milu Zero, which was the dawn of the third Imperium. So probably a lot of... And that was actually good material for the record. There were a lot of issues with Traveler 4th Edition, but the Milu Zero material was mostly pretty good, other than the sort of tooth-grinding cold fusion angle... <laughs> Which, you know, again, maybe we'll talk about that in a later video. Um, okay, so there's a lot. Here's Cleon Junastu, who was the first emperor, Cleon I. Um, Secrets of the Junastu dynasty. So that's probably a, uh, it's probably a, some spoilers there. So players, avert your eyes. Year Zero, the fledgling imperium. Pacificate, pacificate. Boy, I'm struggling with words this morning. I'm recording this at like nine in the morning, so that's probably why. The pacification campaigns, uh, of which there's a whole bunch, actually. The Julian War, war with the, the Julian Protectorate. Uh, wars against the Vargers. The Varger is the correct plural there, not Vargers. Um, got some more plot seeds here great deal of historical detail i mean this material i doubt they had to actually had to they, of course they had to write the whole thing but I, I i don't think they had to actually create any new history here because traveler as a game that's been around since 1977 has such a, a rich fictional history built up around its official universe here's the civil war uh here's uh, looks like the well these are the emperors of the flag actually not like a complete list of emperors but this is between 606 and 621 so it's like a year of the four emperors type of situation except there's like 20 of them uh savior of the empire the uh admiral arbalatra who well i'm not going to spoil the novel for you let me put it that way go read the novel it's it's actually really pretty good like i said um <clears throat> Uh, the Soleimani movement, uh, which is, uh, you know, so the original humans are from Sol or Terra, um, and that has created, that that uh, fact has created the or birthed the Soleimani movement, um, which we'll talk about when we get to the Soleimani front book in a later episode. We'll talk about that in much greater detail. Psionic Suppressions, which of course ties into the Jordani Project Longbow, this is, there's going to be a lot of good reading here, actually. Uh, we're still in the history section. There's a huge section of history here. The Classic Era. So it's literally called the Classic Era here. Strephon Ascendant. Now there is an, there's also an, a sort of alternate traveler universe path in the Steve Jackson Games product, which gives you kind of the, the underpinnings to say, okay, Strephon does not get assassinated, the Imperium does not disintegrate, but there's still those underlying problems are still there and have to be dealt with. Uh, okay, so now we get to Core Sector. So Core Sector is what it sounds like. It is the Imperial Core. And the systems in here were all originally randomly generated and i have no idea to what extent those were then massaged by hand but i suspect that the that is probably not very much um but we have the different i, I should also point out that there is a um a map that comes with this which i for some reason didn't open this is the core sector map here's the Silian worlds um, if you've got the physical book, this should come as a big poster map. These are really big posters too, by the way. I'm kind of tempted to like get uh, second copies of all of these maps and then cut them up and put them all together on the wall. Except I don't have a wall that's big enough for that. I need to put that at a gymnasium or something. Um, <clears throat> but so this is going to follow the standard sort of subsector format that Mongoose has established. They, not like they invented this for their sector books, which is to give you a, a bunch of background, a page or two on this, the subsector itself, um, give you the UWP back, uh, data for the entire subsector, and then to detail a couple of worlds. In this case, it looks like about four, um, 
<coughs> that are in that subsector. Now, some people find, as, as it's been mentioned in the comments of previous videos, some people find this approach unsatisfying because you don't get all the data. Um, I think that does a little bit miss the point of the way traveler sector data is supposed to work, which is to say that I'm supposed to, as the referee, I'm <clears throat> if I have players here and you know I've got people coming to this planet, I'm supposed to take these numbers all of which means something, and which is not terribly hard to memorize, you know, what order these things are in, uh, and infer what the world is like from those numbers. Now, my inference as a referee is going to be different from somebody else, some other referee's inference, therefore making my campaign unique and making my, you know, docky AG planet different from the next the next person's uh version of the same planet i think that's awesome um and you know maybe we'll talk about that in a future episode as well <clears throat> so here we have another subsector we get another several worlds it does look like we're getting more detail inside the subsectors here than we have in some previous books we are like a little over halfway through the book third subsector i i see no sense in going through these one at a time uh but we we're also getting things like pieces of equipment and stuff like that i kind of would like to see them put all of this equipment and robots and ships and stuff like that into like a robots book and a sh which is supposed to be coming and a ship's book just for easy finding of this stuff as opposed to having to paw through uh you know a sector book to see you know i need i need a cargo robot stats here they are but you know it's it's hard to find <clears throat> but that's a, sort of a line organization question that that is bigger than the episode we're having today. Here is a, is this a vehicle? Bright side crawler, yes. <clears throat> More planets, McKee subsector. Ah, this is the site of Research Station Gamma, which there's a classic adventure about. Which is that one of the ones that's been redone? I don't think it is. I might be wrong. Please feel free to correct me in the comments. Uh, oh, this is where Depot is. So Depot is super important. It's like um, the deep... So these are like Imperial Naval Depots uh, where there's like major... Not It's not just a base. It's it's a huge, you know, sector-supporting fleet base. Um, so it'll be super interesting to read that. I wish we had time to go through all that. Core sector. We're already, you know, 22 minutes into the video. Cultural rift between the Silean worlds and a group known as the Wayward Worlds. Oh, and here's the Wayward Worlds. Uh, that's very interesting. Okay. So we're getting a lot of inside the sector details here. Here's Capital, which is the capital planet of the entire Third Imperium. Oh, and we even get a map. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure that I've seen a map of Capital before. The Grand Palace of Arbalatra. Here's a dragon-looking critter. A lot of detail here. A uh, lot of, lot of. This is really solid material. Um, organizationally, I think I have quibbles, but in terms of presenting tons and tons and tons of, essentially one traveler subsector is really. I mean, you don't have to limit yourself in this way, but one traveler subsector is really enough space to run an entire campaign in, right? So what you'd be doing with with taking one of these is to say, okay, we're going to set our campaign in. Um, the chant subsector, okay, and maybe you'll stray out of it from time to time, but that'll be sort of the center of our campaign. And it's tons of space, right? If you look at the maps, um, you know, there's a lot of worlds in here. There's, there's probably more than enough worlds to get everything done that you need as a referee. Um, so then, what you, how you approach this is to say, okay, I'm going to read through this chant subsector section, and then maybe the adjoining subsectors too, and then I'm going to use the skeleton that they've provided me here to develop my campaign. Okay, so here's what's on Tra, here's what's on Rebel, but there's all these other planets that I have to figure out what is on, and I can either do that in advance in a traditional campaign prep sort of way, or I can just do it on the fly, seat of the pants, if I want to. I'm the kind of person that likes to prepare that stuff in advance, um, even if I am actually just kind of uh, ad-libbing the, the actual campaign. I'd, I'd like to, you know, know going in, you know, what's on Glimmer, for example. Um, 
And you can, of course, get some information from the Traveler Map website. Uh, but, you know, you're not beholden to that either. A lot of that's procedurally generated, too. Reference. This is the this is called that because it's the center of the galactic coordinate system. Second reference. That's interesting. Okay, this, you know, the, read the novel is, is what I'm going to say on that. Oh, this is cool. So this is... Uh, the Libby is a refurbished Ajanti High Lightning class cruiser permanently assigned to the reference scout base. That's interesting. Okay. Chnar uh, subsector. Some stats on the Duchess of the subsector or somewhere in the sector subsector. The Traveler nobility is is a bit uh, is a bit convoluted. <laughs> Um, I think in I think by design actually because real nobility was pretty convoluted too. So so we're still here's the mush, the fearsome mushroom people. Uh, these are or or uh, or uh, snail people I guess. Uh, this actually gives you rules for making characters of these snail people. That's pretty cool. And here's a, an index. This looks pretty honestly. This looks pretty perfunctory. Um, I think. I'm going to I'm going to say I feel this index is totally inadequate. So, uh this has been a quick look. Hopefully I've given you a little bit of a taste of what the book entails. I'm pretty happy with it just for that huge history section alone. I think that makes it worthwhile. And for the additional detail on Core Sector, which is a the deepest dive we have ever seen in the history of the product line, not this product line, but the history of Traveler as a thing um into the Core Sector and it, so I was super looking forward to this book. I'm very curious to see uh the future, you know, nation books that Mongoose intends to do. Uh, hopefully this has given you a little bit of a taste of this particular book. This is, of course, the, you know, the third Imperium volume. So please do check it out at the Mongoose Publishing website if you're interested. Um, if I remember, I will put a link to the uh, product page in the video description. Um, in the meantime, if you have found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. Please do click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you have any questions or suggestions for more Traveler content, please mention it in the comments below. And if you'd like to help support the channel to help me make more content like this, please do consider contributing through either the Patreon or the Ko-Fi. Um, or you can buy cool Ardwolf Slayer merch from the merch store. All of these are linked in the video description. So in the meantime, thanks for watching and happy gaming.